For more than 15 years now, I've been using this Isotech meter. And I have to say, I've been delighted with it. It's never failed, apart from when I popped the fuse once or twice, but we won't, we won't go with it. But I thought it was probably time to update the meter. Now I have to confess at this stage that this is the first product that I've actually received free of charge. In the five years that I've been doing YouTube, I've tended to resist sponsorship and things like that because I thought it might impend on my truthfulness, shall we say. And I accepted this offer with reservations because I thought, what if I hate it? What if it's awful? And I thought, well, if that's the case, I just won't publish it. But I have to say, to my sheer delight, I'm absolutely delighted with this meter. It does everything that I expect it to, and it does it very well. And I'm going to show you some of these things shortly. I have negotiated a price reduction for you, my viewers, if you follow the link under the listing. Clicking on the link will give you a reduced price. I'm not sure by how much, because I think it may depend on your country and where you will actually buy this from. It's an Amazon link, so but saying that there are many Amazon branches all around the world, so I can't tell you now what it will cost you. So please click on the link if you like this meter and help me in the channel. And I have to say that any money that I make on this will be ploughed back into the channel. I won't be going out buying a Rolls Royce or anything like that. It comes in this semi stiff case which is ideal for protecting the meter. The meter would normally fit under here and it comes complete with thermocouple and two sets of batteries because the thing itself runs on three A or triple A batteries. One set is already in the meter. Needless to say, when they run out, you've got another set handy, which is pretty useful. The Teslas themselves that come with this are about average quality. They're the, they're the kind of leads that come with many a meter. And it's just literally got the sharp pointed ends and the connections, which are nice and safe. You can't accidentally get a shock from these, which is always good. To switch the meter on, you simply press the button at the end and hold it for a couple of seconds and it springs to life. By default, it comes on to auto, which, as the name suggests, means that whatever you plug into it, it will auto select the range automatically. The only thing it won't select automatically is the current range because like most meters you have to transfer the cables from here to here. If you want to go manual you hold this button down here and we are now in manual and if you keep pressing it you will see from the ranges here it clicks to the next range and keeps going round. The only negative thing I would say is you can't go backwards again. If you want to go right back to the beginning, you do have to do this, but then it resets to auto. Not a big deal, but I think if I, if I was designing it, I would have made it so you can go in both directions. The first one you come to is voltage and that's AC or DC. At the moment, you can see it will measure DC and the decimal point is here. And if you change, press the range button, it changes whether you're gonna measure low voltage or high voltage. And it also shows the temperature. And this is the ambient temperature in the room at the present. And 
For me personally, I'm delighted to say that it's in Celsius and not Fahrenheit. If you want to change the DC to AC measurement manually, if you press select and you can see it's now on the AC range and again to my sheer delightment it's true RMS because if you're measuring something on amplifiers or something like that you really need true RMS because otherwise you've got to hold it you've got to convert it from peak to RMS and we'll test this shortly to see what sort of frequency it will measure accurately up to because obviously you tend to associate AC with mains, i.e. 50 or 60 hertz, depending on your country. And many meters give very good results with true RMS at those frequencies. But if you go much above those frequencies, the reading accuracy varies. So we'll test this in a minute and we'll see what frequency we can go up to well, and down to for that matter. Our next range is resistance and again we'll test some accuracies of some of the components shortly. On the side of the machine is a, an emblem that looks like a torch because that's basically what it is. If you press this you can see we have an LED on the back. It's not over bright to be honest. And bearing in mind it's quite bright in this room at the present because of the lights for filming. This is the DC voltage range and I've got 20 volts 0.1 selected here and the meter shows exactly the same. 28 volts DC here on all three meters. I'm injecting a sine wave from my oscillator into both the meter and the scope and that will obviously give you a visual display but if you can see this here that's showing a hundred hertz that's the frequency and the meter is also showing a hundred hertz so rather than scan it and spend hours and hours I'm going to go down in frequency and see the smallest it will measure well the lowest is is that basically the meter does go slightly below that but that I'm injecting 2 Hertz and I think that's pretty good 1.999 in fact my scope won't measure it it won't go down low enough but let me just see if it will actually go down even lower yep the meter will measure 1 Hertz so I don't think you can complain about that because my oscilloscope won't measure that. Let's go up in frequency. We're now up to 20 kilohertz. The meter shows it's spot on and so does the oscilloscope. That's 20 megahertz as you can see on the scope. And I can't, I don't, I can't go up any higher than that and it's still reading perfectly. We're having a look at the AC voltage frequency range now and general accuracy. I'm comparing this meter here. We're on this scale and it's on 10 volt scale and it shows 3 volts and the meter shows 3 and bear in mind this is digital and it is probably more accurate than the analog meter and it's 40 hertz. Now the reason I've chosen 40 Hertz is because obviously the AC is probably calibrated at 50 Hertz and 40 is as low as you can go and still get an accurate reading. If I take it down to 30 you can see the accuracy is going off somewhat. So we'll go up in frequency now and see how far we can go. Well it's more or less completely flat up to one kilohertz which is what we're reading here the output is the same on the analog meter and it's still flat here but after 1k it does start to roll pretty quickly so clearly the meter can't be used in the place of an AC millivolt meter like this 
which is flat up to some megahertz. We're now going to have a look at the NCV input. And what this does, you can see I've got no leads connected. It's basically tracing AC power lines. Now, clearly, I'm going to have AC coming from this power switch. But imagine that switch wasn't there and we're trying to trace the wires. So we move around. The low means low sensitivity, but when you get right where the power is, it goes up to H. Beeping and the red light comes on. We're on diode check now and LED diodes to be precise and it shows you the working voltage. This time we have a white LED and it clearly shows you the higher working voltage of it. I'm not going to spend too long on this one because it's resistance and other than to show you that it works. And the ironic thing is I thought this was going to be going to be a 47 ohm resistor and I've actually f put it into the wrong bin. So it's clearly a 100 ohm resistor. Well, what do you think? Um, obviously, if I'm going to show you everything this will do, it's going to be a horrendously long video. But the idea was just to whet your appetite and show you that it's a pretty good meter and hope you, if you're going to buy one, you'll buy it through the affiliate link. Just so you know, I think it's pronounced Kiewitz. Apologies to the company if, if I've made a huge mess up of that name. Kiewitz, I would imagine, and it's a KM601. One thing that does concern me slightly, I've taken this um, photograph from the manual where it says that current measurements must be completed within 15 seconds. Now, I don't know why that should be the case. Um, and if that's true, then it's a major problem because one of the things I use my meter for is adjusting quiescent current, something like that. And that takes longer than 15 seconds. So does that mean the meter blows up if you use it for more than 15 seconds? Does it overheat? Or I don't know, hopefully the distributor or the manufacturer will come back to me and put your minds at rest because to me that means it's really unsuitable for measuring current but if you if your only requirement is that you measure the current of something and that's it but if you've seen on on my bench here when you're looking at current, you're doing something on the circuit and the current is varying and you want to be able to observe that. So if you can't do that, then that's a problem. I think the, poss the only possible explanation is if you look at this slide, I've marked the shunts in it, I have to be careful saying that, which are the current shunts. And unlike most meters, particularly the old school meters, where the shunt is basically a quite a large piece of wire. These are actually small components mounted on the PCB, which maybe they get warm, maybe they get hot. I don't know, but that's the only instant thing that comes to mind. The capacitance range, trying to measure low value capacitors is not really on. It's, it's, it either won't measure them or they're inaccurate. This is the small screw that you have to remove to gain access to the battery compartment and this is one of my negatives on this. The problem is the screw isn't captive and the reason I'm having a little moan about it is because I just undid this screw to put the batteries in and the screw fell out on the floor and I've been on my hands and knees for the last couple of minutes trying to find the screw. And it's also quite a small screw as you can see by the size of this screwdriver. And it won't take many unscrewings, if that's a proper word, before the head becomes 
damage. It really needs to be a much bigger type of screw on there, preferably one that you can undo with your fingers rather than having to find a screwdriver. I don't want you to think I'm negative about this meter because I'm not. I really like it. The display is one of the best I've seen on any meter and I shall certainly be using it often on this channel. So you'll see it once or twice, but possibly not on the current range. <laughs>